Welcome to our St. John's Parish family on this 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time. We especially welcome all who are visiting with us. At this Mass, we remember in a special way, Jim Lyons. Please stand to give a sign of welcome to those around you. We begin our liturgy singing number 753 in the Gather Hymnal, All Are Welcome, number 753. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, this Mass is only starting, and there is already so much joy uh, in this building. First of all, we are here still in the early days of the month of August, and so many of us on this beautiful day are here with us. We, as always, send our love and our prayers to all those brothers and sisters who are watching us online and who, in many ways, create a, a spiritual family, even long distance. And I know there are some people from our community, some people from close away, and some from very, very far places who log into our YouTube channel and watch this Mass with us. And every time they do, uh, it is a moment to be spiritually united with us. And then, uh, those of you who were here a little bit earlier already clapped uh, to the, the beautiful music that we have heard from four young people who are joining us at this Mass. Brandon Chu and Miles Young and Brianna Kim and Hanoi Song, four young people who are with us as a quartet playing at this Mass. Uh, they represent various high schools in our area, uh, but they uh, represent a lot of love, a lot of love of the music and a lot of love of God, which we manifest through our own talents and sharing them with our brothers. So, Brendan is from Dambasco Prep, uh, Miles from Clarkstown South, Brianna from Holy Angels and Hamlin from Bergen County Academies. Uh, and uh, we have Chichi with us who just recently graduated uh, from the Holy Angels Academies and she's on her way to college. So very special thank you to uh, these young people and to all the young who are with us and those of you who are bringing children to Mass and to the liturgies. They all symbolize such a youthfulness of our parish and the potential that we have continually to grow in love of God and of each other. So as we begin this Mass, let us ask the Lord for his pardon and mercy. Lord Jesus, you gave your flesh for the life of the world. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you call us to draw near to you in your body and blood. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the afflicted and strengthen the weak. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us into everlasting life. and ever-living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit we dare to call our Father. Bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may marry to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. reading from the book of Kings. Elijah went a day's journey into the desert until he came to a broom tree and sat beneath it. He prayed for death, saying, This is enough, O Lord. Take my life, for I am no better than my father's. He lay down and fell asleep under the broom tree. But then an angel touched him and ordered him to get up and eat. Elijah looked, and there at the head was a hearth cake and a jug of water. After he ate and drank, he lay down again. But the angel of the Lord came back a second time, touched him, and ordered, get up and eat else the journey will be too long for you. He got up, ate, and drank. Then strengthened by that food, he walked 40 days and 40 nights,
to the mountain of God, Horeb. The word of the Lord. <laughs> Our psalm is number 47, Taste and See, number 47. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with which you were sealed for the day of redemption. All bitterness, fury, anger, shouting and reviling must be removed from you along with all malice and be kind to one another, compassionate, forgiving one another as God has forgiven you in Christ. So be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and handed himself over for us as a sacrificial offering to God for a fragrant aroma. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. Amen. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The Jews murmured about Jesus because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. And they said, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph? Do we not know his mother and father? Then how can he say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered and said to them, stop murmuring among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the father who sent me draw him and I will raise him on the last day. It is written in the prophets, they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to my father and learns from him comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the father except the one who is from God. He has seen the father. Amen, amen, I say to you, Whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the desert, but they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, from the beginning of this Mass, I've been thinking, wow, this is so very special. A couple of times. First time when I walked out and saw so many of you. Uh, this is the, these are the early days of the month of August. Many of our parishioners and many brothers and sisters are on vacations. And, uh, as I heard one time an elderly priest telling me, uh, Jesus goes down to Jersey Shore during the summer months. So seeing so many of you gave me that, wow, this is so very special. Hearing our young people, uh, Gigi and Lisa sing, and, uh, lift our souls with beautiful music, that was another wow. But then the uh, major wow that comes always from being touched by the Word of God comes uh, because we have been gifted in these early days of August and as we begin this very special week when we will celebrate our mothers, Blessed Virgin of Mary's assumption into heaven, uh, we have received a very special gift and that is to come gather and reflect on the sixth chapter of the gospel according to John. We have been doing it since last Sunday, but this particular passage that Deacon Jack just proclaimed for us has such a very special meaning for us as a community of faith, as a parish, and as a disciples of the Lord. Every time when I read passages from the sixth chapter of gospel according to John, I think about three groups of people. One is you, us, family of faith, brought together by Almighty God. In his mysterious plan, he wanted us to be together and to create 
a community of faith, a community of the disciples of the Lord who re-believe what he has told us in the gospel of today, that he is the bread of life, that he's the one who blesses us, who guides us, who sustains us. And those who believe that, you and me will never die. That's the promise that Jesus gave us. Each and every one of us, as we do come, gather, listen, reflect, and receive, are being constantly reassured that this life is not it. I had a blessing to celebrate two funerals this past week. There were two ladies. One was 100 years old and the other was 102 years old. And every time I do celebrate funeral of a person who is elderly and lives such a beautiful long life, I realize with the family and friends who gather how uh, even that number and even that beautiful long life is nothing in comparison with the eternity that Jesus promised to us. So for us that promise is very real and we come to relive it and believe it and then go and share it with our brothers and sisters. So that's us. The second group of people that I very much think about and pray for every time when I read passage from the sixth chapter of Gospel according to John are people who lived in this parish and in this community about 100 years ago. The official year of the establishment of our parish of St. John the Baptist coincides also with the building of the original church of St. John's across the street on Hillsdale Avenue, and that is 1927. That means, dear brothers and sisters, that in about two and a half years, we will celebrate a beautiful hundred years of the existence of our parish. And those who labored, who sacrificed, who believed, those who built that first little church, those who served our community, all those priests, deacons, religious brothers and sisters, all the wonderful parishioners from those almost 100 years ago, were gathering, reflecting on the same passages of the scriptures and having that same belief. And because they did, they have not died. They lived so much in the spirit of this community and we truly believe, the brothers and sisters, that now they live in the glory and eternal presence of Almighty God. And the third group of people that I certainly pray for and think about every time reflecting on the sixth chapter of Gospel according to John, are our brothers and sisters, and I know some of them are still alive and members of this parish, in the late 1960s decided that that little church that at that point was also damaged by fire is not enough. So they labored and sacrificed and worked hard and donated and dreamed and they built this beautiful big house of God. And the one very special reason why I think about them is because they left for us messages. They left for us reminders. They are like those people, family members and friends who go on the long journey, or mothers and fathers, grandmas and grandpas who are about to leave this world, and they leave for us a special message to remind us about what really matters in life. And those messages, the brothers and sisters, are right above us. Every time when we gather, we read those messages left for us by the people who lived and labored and built this church in the late 1960s. One is about the tabernacle that says, they said to him, Jesus, give us always this bread. 
The other is right above us, right here. So those of us who are on the altar or around it can be constantly reminded. And it's taken from this chapter and the exact words that we heard towards the end of the gospel of the day. Jesus reminding you and me that I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the desert, but they died. Those who believe and will receive this bread of life will never die. And every time when we come, dear brothers and sisters, we plug ourselves into this history that is not only 100 years old, we can say, in this parish and in this community, but the history that began with Jesus 2,000 years ago, giving us first his reassurances, his message, and giving up his life. And before he did and was risen and returned back to heaven, and before he took his mother to the eternal kingdom, where one day we hope to be reunited with all the saints, he gave us himself. He gave us the Eucharist and reminded us that every time when we'll do this and we will gather and celebrate the Eucharist, we'll do it in memory of him and that he is that bread of life that we'll once again receive at this Mass. And he's that bread of life who wants to be shared with others through our own lives and through our own witness of faith. So thank you once again for being here. Thank you to Brendan and Miles and Brianna and Howen. Thank you to each and every one of us who is making this Mass special. That music sounded so beautiful and will continue to sound so beautiful throughout this entire Mass. We'll be here like an incense being raised up to heavens in the glory of God and in proclamation of our faith that we truly believe that he is the bread of life, that he's our Lord and our Redeemer. And that although none of us really knows how much time we do have on this earth, that we have received the reassurance that he has prepared an eternal home for each and every one of us. So may they, may this week be filled with many Lord's blessings. And as on Thursday, we'll all celebrate the return of our mother back to God's eternal embrace. Let us also think and dream about our own. Let us pray for all those who have gone before us into the eternal kingdom of God. Let us pray for all the parishioners of this parish who are not anymore with us. And let us, in a very special way, pray for all of our loved ones and all those souls that most need our prayers. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the power of the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered dead and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gracious and loving God, you sent your Son to us that we may know salvation, for it's the bread of life. We turn to you now with our needs and the needs of the entire world. Our response today is, Lord, hear our prayer. That the Holy Spirit guide Pope Francis in his ministry to the Universal Church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our nation's leaders may always be conscious of those who are without power and wealth, seeking ways to govern with justice and compassion. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that we may learn to speak and listen to each other with respect and love, even when we disagree. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all gathered around the table of the Lord have ears that are open to the wisdom of God's word and our spirits strengthened through heavenly food. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for an increase in vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, religious life, and holy matrimony. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, experience the healing power of Christ, and may it help them find comfort in their affliction. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, that they be welcomed into the company of all the angels and saints in our heavenly home, especially George D. Gregorio, Carol Veltri, Lee Van Saders, James Aliano, Valentina Ruoco, and Aaron Dudek. We pray to the Lord. And for Jim Lyons, who is living and for whom this Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. Thankful, O God, of infinite mercy, for your love and your gift of the Eucharist. We dedicate our prayers to you and to your care. We ask this to Christ our Lord.
Pray, dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation. We ask this to Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, and your God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, to whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we offer an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy for these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like you do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and a chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring up to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters, our loved ones, our parishioners, and our friends, and all those who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with blessed apostles, with Saint John the Baptist, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co-heirs to the life and may praise and glorify you to your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The 
Uhuhi mehit imi in him, O God, O mighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Now let us pray to our Heavenly Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. With Let us offer one another a sign of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. The Lord, I am not worthy to be and not my word, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Communion hymn is number 838, Eat This Bread, number 838 in the Gather Hymnal.
let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated just for a moment. Uh, I know we waited with the applause for our wonderful Sonos Vitalis uh, Quartet, uh, and it was only because we were so touched. And uh, so I think we should give them a, another big round of applause because this truly was uplifting and fantastic. <laughs> and thank you to Gary and Tony Cesari, uh, who are not only dear, dear friends of our parish, but uh, have connections to so many resources in the world of music. And uh, I know that one in the four uh, young people who are here with us, Brennan and True from uh, uh, Don Bosco, uh, was kind of a leader putting this together. So Brendan, God bless you, and let's do this again, and as often as we can. Uh, it truly is uplifting when we hear beautiful music, especially when it's performed by young people like yourself. I wanted to first of all uh, announce that this Thursday, as we heard uh, in our reflection, is the Holy Day of Obligation, uh, the Solemnity of the Assumption of our Blessed Virgin Mary. And as we do on those days, we'll have three Masses at 8 o'clock, 12 noon, and 7 p.m. Some of you have been asking whether we'll still have the Adoration, and the answer is yes, we'll expose the Blessed Sacrament as we do every Thursday at 3 o'clock. But then I think it would be wise to move the final blessing to a few minutes prior to uh, the beginning of that 7 o'clock Mass. So instead of gathering as we always do around 6 o'clock, shortly before 7 o'clock, we'll repose the Blessed Sacrament and put it back into the tabernacle and then 7 o'clock Mass can be begin. Also, I wanted to say thank you to so many of you who have been reaching out throughout this entire week uh, because we had so much rain and those of you who were here at the uh, 5 o'clock Mass last Saturday and witnessed the beginnings then of what then became almost a potential disaster from our parish as the waters were rising and they reached literally 15, 20 yards from the back doors of the church. That whole back area was flooded. So thank you to all the phone calls and messages and questions of those of you who have been inquiring about how the parish and the offices have been doing throughout this entire week. The good Lord has spared us, uh, but obviously the flooding situation in our area is very, very serious. And we'll talk about it more in the future, but just that you know, throughout this entire week, I have been in touch uh, also with uh, uh, the chief of police and the uh, the borough representatives, including uh, the mayor and board administrator and uh, some members of the council. Uh, on Monday morning, I walk uh, to the property with the chief of police, uh, uh, Chief Sean Smith. I just wanted to show him and file the official report about uh, what really happened here on Saturday evening and uh, what we discovered afterwards. And what I mean is that uh, our entire back area looked like a plumbing store. Uh, these waters uh, were so high and violent and strong that they lifted materials from the construction site about two, three hundred yards from our church. And many of them landed here at the back property of our church, including one full pallet of the material that was lifted and carried by the waters here which leaves us a very important uh, question and dilemma. What's going to happen when this development is built here on the north side of our property and uh, when uh, all this will have certain water protection and, uh, and flooding protection and then push more water towards our property? So those are very significant, important questions that we'll have to ask going forward. Uh, this church is very dear and very special and precious to us and then we'll do everything it takes to protect it. And uh, the flooding situation is truly very, very serious. So thank you. Thank you for your concern. Thank you for your support. And thank you for your, your understanding during this entire week. 
Also, I wanted to say I'm sorry uh, because uh, those of you who have been coming from the east side the door had to experience a little bit of the inconvenience. Uh, we'll have a beautiful repave the entire front area, but uh, as my first pastor, Monsignor Madden, great guy, uh, God rest his soul, used to say when I was a young priest, when you want to God laugh, make God laugh, tell him your plans. If you want to make God laugh, just tell him your plan. So the plan was to finish and repave this area by this weekend, which we're not able to do. Uh, and some of that, if you want to get make God laugh, tell him your plans, involves also me. You will see in the bulletin in my column that I was planning on leaving uh, uh, on Monday to spend about nine days with my dear mother. But because this major project had to be delayed and some other important things at the academy, I had to call the airline yesterday and move the departure to Wednesday of this week, which will hopefully give us enough time to complete this, and uh, and uh, and then I will be able to go and spend a week with my dear mother. So thank you for all of your kindness and support. Thank you for all of your prayers, and uh, let us continue to pray for each other. And this week, to the intercession of our dear mother, Blessed Virgin Mary, let us continue to pray also for our parish and for continual growth in faith and God's blessings in our lives. Now, please receive this final blessing. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, the source and origin of all blessing, grant you grace, pour out his blessing in abundance, and keep you safe from every harm. And may Almighty God bless you and keep you always in his loving care, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel. Thanks be to God. We are sent forth singing number 678 in the Gather Hymnal. City of God. Number 678 in Gather.